I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Thank, thank you. The chair recognizes the ranking member, the distinguished lady from Houston, Texas, Ms. Lee, Ms. Jackson Lee. Thank you for your courtesies, and let me thank uh, Congresswoman Dean for her questioning, and certainly to Congressman Swalwell uh, and to his constituent for his leadership, um, persistent leadership in assuring uh, justice for you. Uh, and I'm very appreciative of his presence here and as well his assistance um, in uh, kind of the ranking member capacity. So thank you so very much for your leadership on this issue. And I think we all want justice for uh, anyone that has been in the midst of a heinous crime um, that has uh, generated uh, in the loss of life. We want to come here today and, and fully appreciate what we're dealing with. Uh, so I want to thank the uh, gentleman from Arizona for yielding to me for my opening statement, which I will uh, try to, um, to summarize and come back again for questions. But uh, we're here today to uh, deal with the issue of retail crime. Recently, retailers and industry advocates have sounded the alarm, expressing concern that organized retail crime has become a significant threat to the retail industry. This criminal activity involves groups of individuals who operate in well-coordinated manner to steal goods or defraud retailers and resell stolen items for economic gain. Mr. Biggs, Congressman Biggs, just last week, I spoke to the mobile phone store owners. Uh, most of those stores are ground floor. All of them are ground floor. They're in shopping centers, strip centers, et cetera. And there's nothing like, uh, I guess the terminology is uh, break the glass and grab. It's something else that smash and grab. Thank you so very much. Uh, and they were speaking of that, and I want to listen to them because that is heinous. It is an economic crime, but it's also violence uh, and um, uh, threatens the potential of people's lives. Smash and grab. We're not here to support that. It is a multi-billion dollar enterprise, and I want them to know that I'm listening uh, to those constituents in Houston who have businesses that are subject to that kind of crime. That evolves and adapts to the latest technological trends within the retail industry and among consumers and inevitably results in higher prices at the cash register. Social media and news reports are replete with videos of flash mobs rushing into stores and overwhelming and sometimes assaulting employees and leaving with bags and arm, armfuls of goods. Most of these retail items that from clothing to jewelry to phones, et cetera. While these anecdotal accounts are alarming, the federal role in deterring these crimes should be made clearer because it seems unclear. The federal government has been recognized, has re long recognized the problem and taken steps to combat organized retail crime and protect store employees, customers, and communities. Cooperation between retailers and federal and state law enforcement agencies through task forces and partnerships has been crucial in addressing these crimes and promoting public safety. For example, the FBI's Cleveland Field Office partnered with the Retail Industry Leaders Association and state and local law enforcement agencies to share expertise, intelligence, and resources to identify, investigate, and prosecute those who perpetrate these crimes. Over the past three years, Homeland Security investigation has tripled the number of cases it is investigating. Last year, HSI, Houston, and the Houston Police Department, who I applaud, uh, arrested eight people and seized nearly 2,000 stolen electronic devices, which is very likely the device of choice. Valued at approximately 1.8 million as part of a joint investigation uh, into a 65 million transnational organized retail crime operations suspected of smuggling stolen cell phones and other electronic overseas and laundering the proceeds. The FBI, the Secret Service, and Department of Homeland Security have all increased their efforts to investigate and prosecute retail crime because it's a domestic national security threat and it connects internationally. Even in spite of the efforts of law enforcement to address this activity, the issue of understanding the prevalence of organized retail crime persists largely due to a lack of consistent and comprehensive data. If I support legislation, that would be one of the aspects of determining what is the level of this type of crime. Data gives us a pathway to solution. And while various retailers, retail organizations, law enforcement track retail theft, there is no uniform definition of organized retail crime or a standardized method for tracking such crimes, which makes it difficult 
to ascertain the full scope of the problem and formulate a targeted uh, response. Compound the inconsistency in data collection with retailers' reluctance to report the full extent of crimes committed in their stores, and lawmakers such as ourselves are left with little information that we can use to determine how Congress can help. If we can get sort of the relief from uh, insurance rates going up or uh, people not wanting to come to your store to these retailers so we can gather data, that might be a good step forward in getting the information we need. Moreover, the anonymous nature of the internet has made it easier for criminals to coordinate their activities and resell their ill-gotten merchandise. But monitoring online activity can be complicated. Not at all, not all transactions can be traced, making it even harder to understand the prevalence of organized retail crime as it occurs. Last Congress, we were able to pass the Informed Consumers Act, which takes effect this month. That's good news. That law will add more transparency to online transactions by requiring online marketplaces to collect, verify, and disclose certain information from high volume sellers and provides consumers with means to report suspicious activities. Despite there being no representative from the retailers present today, I hope our witnesses have been able to, because you've already been testifying, to help us determine whether there's more that the federal government can do to combat organized retail crime, and certainly uh, to prevent the hardship of this mother uh, who has experienced a terrible crisis and devastating act in her life. Uh, I expect that they will be able to explain, or have been able to explain, uh, their vision for increased federal involvement, and I hope members have secured that information from them. While there are those who have advocated for federal organized crime statute, many in law enforcement argue that existing tools are sufficient. Uh, we will keep looking at this to combat these crimes. When considering the creation of new federal offenses, it should be both thoughtful and careful, particularly if there are statutes already available to prosecute the conduct in question. Bearing that in mind, although federal law does not explicitly criminalize retail theft, the transportation of stolen goods across state lines, the sale or receipt of stolen goods, money laundering, conspiracy, all of which are components of organized retail crime and are all currently prohibited by federal law. Enforcement is certainly a key. Catching these bad guys and, and ladies is certainly important. Hopefully today's hearing has been able to determine and will continue to uh, what the impediments to investigating and prosecuting organized retail crime are due more to a lack of resources than a need for additional prosecutorial tools. And so I look forward to listening uh, to uh, the witnesses' answers so that we can be as effective as possible. And yes, when it comes to the dastardly act of someone losing their life, that they'd never have that happen to a mother or family again. Uh, we know there is petty shoplifting, but we know that there is this thing called violent crime that hurts everyone. With that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you. Uh, with that, Chair recognizes the gentleman from California, Mr. Kiley. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you for organizing uh, this hearing. Uh, we need to make crime illegal again. And uh, I'm uh, encouraged by the comments of the ranking member, which uh, made reference to these 